I have some excellent Hyundai news for you guys today. They had the 2024 Investor Day and they spilled a ton of beans on where the company is going. If you're wondering where I'm at, I'm in California for Hyundai actually right now. It's kind of coincidental, I guess you could say, that all this news happens while I'm on a Hyundai event. I'm driving the new, newly refreshed, you can say, Tucson. So stay tuned for my driving impressions of the new Tucson. If you guys are excited, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed for that Tucson drive as well as more Hyundai news coming down the hatch. We have a lot to comb through. I haven't actually looked through it myself. I got off the plane, saw that this news hit, and... This, I just got to my room and I'm filming this. So we're going to be learning at the same time. Hyundai details a flexible response approach to marking conditions and focus on electrification through its Hyundai Way strategy, targeting five and a half plus million annual global sales by 2030, up 30% from 2023. All right, they still have growth in mind for them the only other manufacturers that are growing that much you could say are the chinese manufacturers so hyundai really has lofty goals for growth and i think they they can absolutely do it um, they want to sell 2 million evs per year by 2030 all right in comparison i want to say honda wants to be around there as well and i know toyota wants to be at like three and a half million bevs per year by 2030. But ironically, Hyundai is uh, way ahead of Honda and Toyota despite having maybe slightly lower total EV sales by 2030. But again, this is the most recently announced information. Toyota could revise their EV numbers anytime they want, for example. Well, if you look at it this way, two, 2 million divided by 5.5 million, let's get the old calculator out. I should know that by heart. 2 divided by 5.5, so over a third. They're estimating over a third of their total sales will be EV, which is really, really close to what Toyota's predicting too. So if they both hit a third and hit the markets that really want EVs, then that makes sense to me. Now they want to introduce new, and notice how this is really high up on the list here. They plan to introduce new extended range EV models. Okay, you could call them long range plug-in hybrids with new type of EV with a range of more than 900 kilometers on a single charge in North America and China. All right, well, we don't know what this 900 kilometers, we don't know what regulations they're following. If it's like EPA or WLTP, more than likely it's WLTP. Um, and then I can backtrack from there. WLTP, and let's say we convert that to miles, it's not going to be, it could be 558 miles of range with an extended range plug-in hybrid. Um, but if if we got to convert it back to EPA, maybe it's 490 miles of range instead of 560 miles of range. So it'll be interesting to see what the range will be when everything's, you know, when the dust settles, when we have this vehicle here, when it gets, a, you know, rated by the EPA, et cetera. So this number, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me because, again, I don't know what cycle, et cetera. All right. They aim to offer a full lineup of 21 EV models by 2030, ranging from affordable to luxury and high performance. Performance. And they're introducing an enhanced next-gen hybrid system with improved performance and fuel efficiency and plans to expand hybrid offerings to 14 models from the current seven. Genesis luxury brand will offer hybrid models. This was confirmed and it was a yesterday's video that I made. Uh, they want to have this extended range plug-in hybrid uh, technology in the GV70. Um, and Genesis confirmed for UK that they're going to be making hybrids. So, of course, those hybrids will make it to other global markets as well, especially here in the United States. But I theorize on, on high-performance hybrids from Hyundai with turbo four-cylinders and twin-turbo V6s. It could get really interesting and really, really fast. Let's move on to the next bullet point. Continuously pushing for battery technology internalization. Develop affordable nickel, cobalt, manganese batteries and strengthen safety technology. Interesting. They want to vertically integrate um, seemingly their battery technology here. Have it more in-house seemingly. Maybe they do more joint ventures. 
I, I'm not quite sure what that means exactly. Maybe we can find it in the rest of this article. They plan to commercialize autonomous driving vehicle foundry business to supply autonomous vehicles to global autonomous driving software firms. Okay, that makes sense. Aiming to secure top tier energy leadership during the energy transition period by strengthening group wide hydrogen technology capable capabilities across the value chain. Yesterday's news was BMW and Toyota further working together with hydrogen, um, Honda General Motors working together in hydrogen, and the Koreans working on hydrogen in their own camp. So there seem to be three main developers of hydrogen um, propulsion systems from these automakers. We have some investments and share stuff, which I'm not going to get into, but I want to read more into, uh, if we can find more in information on um, these hybrids. All right, let's read into this E-Rev. That's what we call it for short. It's not p have or have. Uh, we have a new term here that is not new, you could say, in China because BYD has been doing this sort of um, extended range electric vehicle uh, for a few years now. And um, Hyundai is going to be doing I know for sure Toyota is going to be doing it. We just don't know when. Um, but now they're going to be rolling out a full lineup expansion and new E-Rev. E they're doing this in response to the recent slowdown in EV demand. They're listening to the market. They're listening to the consumer. And that's why I think Hyundai shouldn't have a problem growing 30%. Look, hybrids are really, really highly sought after right now. And it's going to be fun to see their next-gen hybrid systems. So the new E-Rev will combine the advantages of internal combustion engines and EVs, right? Hybrids do that in general. Hyundai has developed a new unique powertrain and power electronic system to enable four-wheel drive with the application of two motors. This operation is powered solely by electricity, similar to EVs, with the engine being used only for battery charging. This sounds exact. It's a series hybrid, and it sounds exactly like Nissan's e-power setups. Ironically, Nissan has none of their e-power technology in the United States, and so we're going to actually look over at the Korean car blog right right here. They've got slides. I've looked at all the the Hyundai Global sites. I couldn't find these sites from anywhere. Only at the Korean car blog, so special shout out to them because I want to look at um, this image right here and we can try to break it down as best as possible and what's going on. It's very, very simple. And Hyundai hasn't done a hybrid like this before. Now, I wonder if this is going to be only their e -Rev system or this is going to also be their next generation hybrids. I guess I can, I mean, I might find that out as we go back to the press release here, here in a little bit. So powered only by electricity, the engine is only used as a generator and it connects to motor generator one up front. All right. That powers the front wheels. Um, and then you have a second motor generator in the back that energy uh, from the battery goes to, to power the rear wheel. So you have this all wheel drive system. Now, just because there's an engine here doesn't mean it needs to be running. Again, you're going to have this big fat battery here. Is it going to be as big as an EV's battery? Well, no, they don't need it to be because you have this onboard uh, range extender. And between the two, you should be able to get 500 miles of range or so. That sounds pretty fantastic. Now, if you uh, look at Toyota's hybrids right now, I just drove the Camry LE I would like my estimated range. I'm not kidding. Was uh, here. I'll just do the math for you. I got 62 miles per gallon and it had a 13 gallon tank. So like a, a decent fuel efficient hybrid with not overly sized wheels and pretty, you know, minimally equipped. You can get 800 miles of range on it on a hybrid nowadays. All right. I don't know if, if Hyundai will be able to push that sort of range. Uh, with this E-Rev, but what it does better than, let's say, uh, let's say that Camry, for example, um, is that it will be extraordinarily efficient in and around town and you will hardly ever need gas. You only need gas for your road trips. All right. Um, so the battery, 
Uh, let's say the battery has 100, 150, maybe 200 miles of range. It's hard to say how big of a battery and what, how efficient the vehicle is going to be that they put this uh, system into. Like a GV70 is not going to be very efficient. It's a luxury vehicle. And it's going to be heavy. Uh, it's going to have large-sized wheels, for example. But, yeah, let's say 100 miles of range minimum on electric. And then you have the onboard generator here to provide let's say the additional 400 miles of range, which is pretty, pretty interesting, um, pretty exciting. And I have all sorts of questions about it, but it makes sense to me um, to kind of be a, a ra like a range anxiety killer. All right. So uh, again, very excited to see this slide here from Korean car blog. Now, another slide that they have that got me really, really excited uh, was talking about their performance EV. So they, we already knew that they're going to launch 21 models by 2030, but you have a high performance EV called the Envision 74. This was a concept um, that looked like a retro rear wheel drive, um, AE86 sort of DeLorean sort of vehicle. I mean, it's a throwback to, I think it was the Pony uh, concept from Hyundai. And so that vehicle is supposed to be coming which is very, very exciting. Um, previously, it was only going to be a uh, like a hybrid fuel cell sort of thing, but it looks like it's going to be full-blown EV at this point. We also are going to have the Genesis Magma, which is going to start with this GV60 Magma. Uh, so very exciting there that we're getting the Envision 74, which is I'm, I'm pretty pumped about because uh, it's it looks incredible. All right. Also, thanks to Korean Car Blog, we have official naming of the Ionic 9 three row EV SUV. It was going to be called the Ionic 7, but in order for it to make more sense numerically with the Kia lineup, um, Hyundai is going to call the Ionic 9 to be in parallel with the brother vehicle, the EV9 from Kia. And we're going to get back to the press release to see if we can find any more information on their um, e-revs or next generation hybrids. Now, Hyundai claims that it will be less expensive than an EV, their e-rev, but just because a battery is smaller and therefore the battery will cost less, but now you're adding in all the complexity of having a gasoline engine in there and a gasoline uh, piping for exhaust and you have to have a gas tank that adds cost too quite a bit. Um, so I don't think these e revs will be cheaper than EVs. They're a hell of a lot more convenient than an EV. And so I don't think I, I I'll believe it when I see it. Now I wonder what fast charging will be like on this e rev. I'm sure it will be capable, but will it be 400 volt or 800 volt architecture. It's hard to say. I'm going to guess it'd be 400 volt because you don't, you don't necessarily need to charge that battery when you're out and about, uh, taking, let's say a, a long road trip. All right. That's why you have the gasoline engine there. So I think Hyundai might be able to reduce costs by putting a, a let's say 150 kilowatt charger in here. DC fast charge compared to what they have now, which is like 250 or 3, 350, somewhere in there. Ooh, this is exciting. We'll get mass production of this e rev in North America. So it'll be coming in North America, built here in North America and in China by the end of 2026, with sales commencing in earnest in 2027. So beginning of 2027, we'll see these E-Revs on the road. And in the North American market, the company will initially launch D-Class SUV models of Hyundai and Genesis brands to meet the remaining demand for internal combustion engines. So from what Korean Car Blog is saying as other and other sources, it's like almost confirmed that the Santa Fe is gonna be the first Hyundai to get this um, E-Rev system and the Genesis GV70 supposedly is supposed to be going to be the first vehicle on the luxury end to get it. So they have a target of 80,000 plus units for the North American market. I think that's a pretty that's a pretty good chunk. And then we'll see where demand is. If if demand is high, of course they should be able to produce more and produce less EVs from their new. I think it's is in the New Georgia plant, if I remember correctly, where they have this new. EV giga 
Gigafactory, so I guess if you want to call it that. Oh, sorry, they call it Meta Plant. I, I, <laughs> Giga Plant would be Tesla. Now in China, they're going to downsize this E-Rev and put it in a C platform vehicle. So that'd be something like maybe the Kona or something slightly smaller, maybe something like the Elantra possibly with a target of 30,000 plus units. So much lower E-Rev volume in China than in North America. And they want to gradually increase EV models by 2030 when recovery in EV demand is expected. Well, how would a recovery in EV demand happen by 2030 or somewhere around there? Well, battery costs come down. Charging infrastructure is much more widely available. Um, you have longer range and you have new battery chemistries so you can charge faster. So there's a lot of things that need to happen for EVs to be, to be more desirable by 2030. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to have next gen hybrids and these e revs, extended range electric vehicles, aka long range plug in hybrids, to fill the gap. I mean, this press release is absolutely enormous. And so I'll put it in the description down below. You can read more about Hyundai's strengthening and battery competitiveness through technology diversity, safety, and quality. I mean, I could make a video literally adjust on that because it's very dense information here. So even this anticipating battery performance enhancement over 20% by 2030, again, like I mentioned just previously, that will add range to these EVs, making them more desirable by 2030. We have new cooling technology that should prevent thermal runaway if uh, the battery starts to take flame which that's a big thing with EVs or anything with a lithium ion battery uh, that's not LFP. Even LFP can catch fire. It's just not as common in theory. So yes, it'll be fun to see all this stuff come down the hatch. It's not just Hyundai. Hyundai is one of the fastest movers in bringing out technology. So uh, it's, it's great to see this. And I can't wait to, to see their next gen hybrids and extended range uh, plug-in hybrids called e-revs come in 2026 as well but we have new software with all this over the air update sort of stuff for better for worse i know a lot of you guys don't like more software in a vehicle but when we're talking about electric vehicles you need to have good software if it's going to be a solid ev but anyways i'll put this in the description if you guys want to read more about it stay tuned for more hyundai news as well as my driving impressions on the refreshed 2025 Hyundai Tucson. Thanks for watching. Peace.